Try this at home. It's really fun to do. Who are we? We are the Mythbusters. Starring me, William Lamping, as cameraman and narrator. With Aunt Matthew Neiser and Andrew Grinia, at, modeled after Jamie and Adam, with absolutely no experience whatsoever with special effects. So Matt, the uh, myth is, does a cold baseball that's been in the freezer travel farther than heated baseball? Now I think that, despite what the myth says, that it should be the opposite way, because warm baseballs have a tendency to, because heat rises, I would think that warm baseballs travel farther. Also having baseball experience myself, on warmer days, I've seen many more farther hits than on cold days when it's freezing. Yeah, but I, well, I, I think the reason why cold balls would go farther and why this myth would come into existence is because uh, I would think that a warm ball would absorb the energy when it gets hit by the bat. It's just going to absorb like a blob and just kind of flail off. But if it's cold one, it's going to be much more solid and you'll be able to hit it further. So it's going to be interesting to see how this smith will play out. Today we're going to do two experiments. For the first one, we are going to set up a ladder and drop the three baseballs from eight feet and see how high they bounce. Then we are going to a baseball field and Andy is going to hit the three different types of baseballs from a tee. We have frozen three balls for 12 hours at zero degrees Fahrenheit while we have heated three baseballs at 300 degrees Fahrenheit for 15 minutes. The three control baseballs have not been modified in any way. As you can see, the cold ball bounced the lowest at around 2 feet, while the control was 2.5 feet and the warm ball ended up around 3 feet. Here we go. Knock it out of the park. Here's our baseball field. The outfield on this particular field that we used was about 107 feet. You can see where our trials landed roughly. The greenish dots in the infield and barely in the outfield were cold baseballs. The black dots in the outfield are the hot baseballs. And the orange dots represent the control ones. The warm baseballs, as you can see in this model, traveled the farthest. This chart shows how far each baseball went in both of our experiments. For the first experiment, it shows how high it went. In the second experiment, it shows how far it went.
Now, everyone knows that a ball will bounce off the ground when dropped from a height above the ground, as demonstrated in our first experiment. Well, anything in motion has kinetic energy, energy of motion. The kinetic energy of the moving ball is converted to potential energy as the ball is squashed into the cement. This potential energy becomes kinetic energy again as the ball springs back into shape and propels itself away from the ground. The change in direction of the ball is caused by the elastic nature of the ball itself. Much like a spring, the ball squashed itself against the cement, then rebounds as it becomes round again. What does this have to do with confirming our test results? Well, the molecules in the warm baseball are moving faster than if it was colder, which gives the ball more elasticity. This extra elasticity in the warm baseballs leads to more potential energy upon impact, which sends them further. You know, man, I think we really hit one out of the park with this one. You know, we got it busted, and despite popular belief, a warm ball does travel further than a cold ball. Yeah, it was pretty interesting. Uh, the warm balls did go further, even in both tests, the one where he dropped it and the one where Andy hit it. Uh, it was pretty interesting. Yeah, although we see that warm balls do have a farther than cold balls in both tests, there was a source of error for the second example. Be although we took an average of several different attempts at it, the tra trajectory angles as well as probably the bat speed have both changed over time. So, in that case, we could have probably done it better by building a machine that hits them at the exact same angle with the exact same speed. But besides that taking an average, we did the best that we could along with the first test that tested the ball dropping from the ground and bouncing back up. Yeah, I just think it's, it's totally busted.